Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my proposed future Japanese tank Tetri series. Now today um, we're doing the amphibious tanks um, which you can see there. Um, you can see one of them's been bolted and underlined again. Basically that means that if I'm not sure if it should be added maybe there's not enough information but have included it into the tech tree just in case Gaijin does find information about it. Um, now we haven't actually got any amphibious tanks in the game at the moment, or I don't think they actually work as amphibious tanks if we do. Um, hopefully we can get them to work as amphibious tanks. Um, it would add a very good dynamic, well, new dynamic to the game that would be very good. It would give Japan a advantage over its um, rival nations. Um, you know, even if they can't add the actual amphibious side of amphibious tanks, I'd like them to be added in regardless, just as land-based tanks, you know, to boost the Japanese tank numbers, add more variety to the game. Um, you know, and I think they'd be very good addition to the game, very good fit to the game. But um, before I off one for t too long, let's get straight into the episode. Now, the first tank we're looking at is the Type 2 Kami, which was basically the amphibious version of the Type 95. Um, I think it was actually based on the Type 95's chassis or suspension, and you can see it in the armour and armament as well. It was armed with one 37mm gun, some of the sources say Type 1, some say Type 98, um, so, but there should be a roughly 40mm penetration at 500m. Um, had pretty weak armour, 6 to 13mm, so quite, uh, it's under-armed, uh, under-armoured, so you know, which is kind of makes sense for a tank that's supposed to float. But this does leave it rather vulnerable to enemy fire. Um, you can also see in this picture it's quite a big blocky tank with um, big sides, so you know, it's, got, it's no sloping, it's a big target. Um, speed wise it could do about 23 miles an hour um, on land, on, on the sea it could do about, uh, if I can find it, 6 miles an hour, so okay speed on land, quite slow on water. Now, crew-wise, it had five to six crew. I think the sixth person was to do if you were actually using it for um, uh, amphibious operations. Uh, I'm not sure how it would actually go crew-wise. Um, driver, bow machine gunner, commander, obviously. But I don't know if it's the, the turret had room for a loader and a gunner, so I don't know if there would be the other the fourth and fifth crew members. And the sixth one, I assume, would be like the, um, you know, engineer or something, uh, possibly a, maybe one of the other crew members was a uh, radio man or something, I'm not really sure, but um, you know, it's got a lot of crew, so it will be difficult to knock out, um, you know, crew wise by, or by killing all the crew so how will it actually work in the game? If they're used for amphibious operations in the game, um, I think they they would be very vulnerable, I mean, I don't know with the armor, what the pontoons would be like, they're not going to be that armoured um, you know, it would be easy to destroy them, but I think it would be, you know, would give Japan some very good extra tactical options, you know, maybe instead of charging across a bridge or, you know, across open land, they could use their amphibious tanks to go around the enemy defences and forcing them to spread themselves more thin. Um, of course it's going to have to be a very low tier tank, I'd say, you know, about the same tier as the Type 95, or same barrel rate as the Type 95. It's got very bad armour, it's not got the best gun in the world, but, um, you know, Japan did do some very good amphibious tanks, it would be very good for Japan to get some amphibious tanks, and this would be a very good starting point for them. Now the next amphibious tank on our list is the Type 3 Karchi, uh, basically an amphibious tank version of the Type 1 Chai He, um, but it had a lot of modifications um, for amphibious operations. Now, first of all, it had a much better gun, the Type 1 47mm gun. Um, as I've talked about before, there's conflicting reports on how much penetration it had. I've got 40 to 65mm, depending on who you believe, at 500m. So, you know, obviously quite a bit more capable. Um, also had a lot more armour, 10 to 50mm of armour, so it should be able to, you know, defend itself and dish out the damage. However, there are some drawbacks. Um, the speed is actually slower on land, um, 20 miles an hour, so down from something like 23. And on sea, it's a little bit faster. It can do six and a half miles, I think, before it was six miles per hour. Um, but it's not much of a gain. I mean, you've lost quite a lot of speed on the land, and yeah, a bit of a speed boost on sea is good, but it's not really that much of a gain. It's also still very big and blocky and it's actually got these things above the turret and the engine block for to allow air in. 
um, they might not be removable in game. So if a shot hits there and causes a lot of shrapnel, that could go down straight into the turret or to the uh, engine. You know, the so an even bigger target than um, you know the regular tanks. Now, crew-wise, it could take five to seven. Again, depending if it, on if it was doing amphibious operations. Um, I I think one of them was again an all onboard mechanical engineer, but um, I don't know where the rest would all be. Again, I'm guessing driver, bow machine gunner, commander at least. But that only and the mechanics that's four. But then the other three, um, dry, um, gunner, loader, maybe someone else. I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest. So tiering wise, where do I think it should be? I actually think it could be a very, very high tier one. Um, probably about the same battle rating as the, or a little bit higher than the Type ninety seven Chiha. Um, maybe about three, uh, two point seven. The reason I put it tier one, and unlike the other forty seven millimeter gun tanks, is that it's an amphibious tank, so it's going to be under a lot of fire a lot of the time if used in, in amphibious operations. Um, but, you know, so amphibious operations are a lot riskier, so I think Japan should get a tank that's more likely to survive and then have a bit of an advantage on the uh, land, whereas the defenders are already going to be on the land in defensive positions, so, you know, to even the odds a little bit. Ultimately, I think this tank would perform its role very well, um, and I think it would be a very good interesting addition for the Japanese tank tech tree, and, you know, hopefully it can be added. Now the next tank on our list is the Type 5 Toku, and unfortunately there are no known photographs of it um, in existence, so I can't actually show you a picture of it. There's also a lot of confusion about how far along in development it was. Um, some websites say that it was a prototype that was never finished. My book by Zaloga mentions that it was considered but too late to have been manufactured, which implies it was a prototype. Some other websites mention it being finished as a prototype. Um, you know, I've bolded and underlined it as something to be considered, but, you know, there may not be enough information for it to be added. Now, going off the limited information I have, it had a bit of an unusual armament. Um, apparently, it had a Type 147mm gun, which, as we've discussed before, could do between uh, 40 and 65mm of penetration at uh, 500 meters, but it also had a 25mm gun. Um, but weirdly, the gu the 25mm gun was in the turret, and the Type 1 47mm gun was in the hull. Why they put it in the hull, I have no idea, but um, obviously that limits how useful it is. I couldn't find any penetration characteristics for the 25mm gun either, so can't give any information there. Armour-wise, it was 10 to 50mm of armour, so again, quite well armoured. Speed-wise, it could do about 20 miles an hour on land, or 6 miles per hour on sea, so it's lost a bit of speed on sea as well now, um, and stayed about the same on land. Uh, crew was apparently 5. I'm going to guess driver, gunner for the 25mm uh, gun, uh, gunner for the 47mm gun, then commander, loader, or mechanic, something like that. Now, like I said, there isn't much information on it. I've possibly got some of this information wrong, because some of the websites are also say in um, 47mm gun or 25mm gun. But um, as far as most pl places seem to say they had both. But, um, you know, like I said, I could have possibly got some of this information wrong. So I've underlined it and bolded it. It would be nice if Gaijin put it in. I've put it as a battle rating, or not, or a battle rating of 3, maybe very high, low, low, low tier 2, um, so it has a chance against enemy tanks, which again are going to be on land and have the advantage, um, because they'd be able to set up defensive positions, you know, quite early. Um, it's not a very big priority for this tank to be added, but it would be nice if Japan got it, because otherwise they only have two amphibious tanks, um, and I think it would add, you know, amphibious tanks would add a very nice dynamic to the game, um, give, give Japan a bit of an advantage, um, over some of the enemy nations. So hopefully you've enjoyed that episode, um, hopefully it's given you a bit of um, information on the potential Japanese amphibious tanks for a Japanese tank tech tree. Uh, the next Japanese tank tech tree episode I'll be looking at the tank destroyers and assault guns, which I'm going to go through, you know, before I do that to make sure they're alright. I think there's a few I'm not sure about. Now the actual next episode, because I only said next Japanese tank tech tree episode, might actually about be about American tank destroyers, because um. Basically, it seems they're going to be coming out a lot sooner than um, we expected, um, possibly 1.49. So, um, you know, if you see American tank destroyers, that's why, you know, just giving you a heads up. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe. Uh, 
leave feedback, I could always do with more feedback. Uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.